guys, this is Miss McCullough, and today we're going to do another writing lesson for the AMI packet that y'all have. It's going to help us learn about the narrative writing diamond that we've been talking about. So let's go over what the narrative writing diamond looks like again. So remember, we have it's a diamond, and it helps us tell a narrative story. Those have, you know, like a beginning, middle, end. We meet our characters in the beginning. We have a problem in the middle, and then it gets solved by the end. Okay, so let's draw that out. See if we can remember how to do this. Whoops. Okay, so we have our diamond, and we're going to divide it into three parts. That helps us tell the narrative story. Okay, so remember, the top is the beginning. So I'll put a B up here for it. The beginning. And then the middle, that's the biggest part, because that's where most of our story takes place, is in there. And then the end is at the bottom. So at the beginning, that's where we meet our characters. Remember that, and we figure out what our setting is. I'm going to draw a person up there for the characters in our story. I'm going to draw a house, because we're figuring out what the setting is in our story, right? And then, do you know what happens in the middle of a story? If you said problem, you're right. So I'm going to put some question marks. And we're going to say problem. The problem happens in the middle of a story. At the end of the story, though, we know that the problem gets solved. That way, when your reader is looking at your story and reading it, they have a good ending. They end on a good note, and they're happy. Problem is solved. We'll put a smiley face. Remember how we did that in the last video? Um, okay, so I have a little activity for us to do today. We are going to talk about today about transition words. And we're going to do our activity to help us. Transition words. We kind of talked about this a little bit. We should always use transition words in our writing. So, can you think about what a transition word is? What's a transition word? So, I think about transition words, and that helps me keep the sequence of my story. Remember, it's like first, next, last, after that. Those are transition words. And when we use a transition word, we have to put a comma because there's like a pause after it. So, if we're telling a story, we go first. I went to school. Do you hear that pause in there? That's that comma after it. The reader is pausing at that comma. So we put a comma after transition words. And they always start with a capital letter. So it could be first, next, last, after that, things like that. Those are transition words. So we're going to do this activity today to help us write a story and be able to sequence it. Okay, are you ready? Okay, well, let me show you my pictures. I have, now even though the boy in these pictures don't look the same, we're going to pretend like they are the same. Okay, so this is a little boy writing about his day, and this is the pictures he drew. So here's a little boy, he's eating breakfast. Okay, uh, there's a little boy, he's with one of his friends, they're at school, and they're swinging on the swings. Uh-oh, in this, this picture, the little boy, he has scraped his knee and he's crying because it hurts. But here, the little boy is playing baseball. So we're going to try to use transition words to help us tell this story about these pictures. And that'll help our writing in our story be more clear. It'll help us, help us to have a sequence of events. Okay. You ready? So, let me get a piece of tape so I can hang up this piece of paper. Okay, so our first picture was the little boy eating breakfast. We're going to call this little boy, his name can be, uh, we'll call him Dylan. His name, we'll do Dill for short, Dylan. 
if I call him Dill. So, we'll start off our story with a transition word. Remember, we start with a capital letter and then we use a comma. So we go first, comma, Dill was eating breakfast. Or maybe we could add a little more detail and we could say, Dill just woke up and was having his breakfast. Where do you think he was getting ready to go? He was going to go to school. That's right. First, Dill just woke up and was getting ready for school by eating breakfast. He was eating cereal or oatmeal or something. Period. So now let's look at this. Remember, in writing, we always have to have some things in our writing. That's like sentences, they start with a capital letter. We'll underline it. Names always start with a capital letter. We have spacing in our writing. Remember that spaghetti meatball spacing? In between words, we have meatballs. But in between letters, we have little pieces of spaghetti. We don't want it all to be smushed together. We gotta be able to read it so it's neat. Okay, and then also we have periods. We have punctuation marks, okay? So let's keep going. Let me get another piece of paper out just in case we need it because Miss McCall is kind of writing big. Okay, so we have first still woke up and was getting ready for school by eating breakfast. Wow, we put a lot of detail on that. All right, so now... What do you think happens in this next picture? That's right. Dill is at school and he's playing on the playground. Okay. So we'll say, it's kind of like Dill's telling about his day. Next, Dill went to school. We'll say, and he couldn't wait for recess. Next, Dill went to school and... He could not wait for recess. Notice how Miss McCullough has punctuation marks. She used a capital letter. She used a transition word that we've been talking about right there. I said next, comma. And so next, Dill went to school and he could not wait for recess. He played on the swings. But you know what happens in narrative stories in the middle part? They have a problem. Okay, so what do you think is going to happen on the swings that's going to make him get to this picture? Think about what could happen there. He played on the swings. I bet, you know what I think? I think Dill must have been swinging too high or not paying attention to what he was doing. And he accidentally fell off the swing and he must have busted his knee open. He scraped it on the ground on those rocks. Hmm. All right, so that was, that's what happens in the middle of a story. A problem happens. So Dill's not having a, a good day right now. He's scraped his knee and it hurts. Where do you think he's going to go after that? After when he fell down and he scraped his knee? If I go to the nurse, right? Think about maybe how can we fix that problem if he goes to the nurse? Okay, so... We'll say, we can use like an exclamation. We can say, oh, no, exclamation point. Dill fell off the swing and 
straight his knee. Oh, poor deal. But we gotta solve this problem. So maybe we could say something like, Dill's friend, remember his friend that he was swinging with, helped him get to the nurse, and she put a band-aid on it. That'd be a sweet friend, wouldn't it? Oh, no. Dill fell off the swings and scraped his knee. His friend helped him to the nurse. Maybe we could say, remember our last picture is this one. And I guess Dill has a baseball game after school. So maybe we could say Dill was worried he wasn't going to be able to play in his baseball game. What if we put some emotions or feelings in our writing? That'd be good. Dill was worried he would not be able to play baseball after school. Maybe we're going to use transition words. Great. You got a lot of writing. I hope y'all are going to be able to write this much on your stories by using transition words. They help your story to, you, it helps you keep up with how your story is going and it helps you to explain your story better. Okay, so we can say, um, so maybe after that, I use transition words, right? After, oh, I'm not getting this McCullough. After that, Jill got a band aid and felt better. Period. I always put periods at the end of a sentence. After that, Dill got a band-aid. But we're not at the end, Miss Lacola. And felt better. We gotta solve our problem. And felt better. So maybe now we can say finally Dill knew he would be able to play baseball after school. Yay, his problem got solved. He went to the nurse, he got a Band-Aid, and he felt better, and he was able to play baseball after school. Do you see how when we use transition words like finally, comma, after that, comma, those help our writing to be sequenced. So that our reader can tell our story. It helps it flow better. Right? Alright. In your writing this week, I want you to practice using transition words. See if that helps your writing. Remember, they always start with a capital letter and then you use a comma. Use this information in your AMI packets to help your writing and use these transition words. Alright. Hope to see you in the next video.